How do we take this location and make it look like something along these lines? Some locations are seemingly difficult to make look great, but that is in their nature. The standard bathroom or restroom will quickly fall into that category. However, as noted by The Atlantic, we are currently in the golden age of bathroom scenes. However, the bathroom you have available may not be ideal for filming. For example, mine doesn't even have a window. Nevertheless, where there's a will, there is a way. Therefore, today let's explore three lighting examples using just one light to create completely different scenes. A core challenge of filming in a bathroom is that, well, they're not typically big and can't house a wide variety of lighting equipment, but these tips should get you by. So let's look at these examples. We've got Black Swan from Darren Aronofsky, Breaking Bad created by Vince Gilligan, and Fight Club directed by the great David Fincher. Now these scenes don't have cinematic grandeur. They just depict the characters going about their business. Notice the light is overhead but soft enough to avoid casting strong shadows or creating directional lighting. This is your typical restroom lighting. But how do we achieve this effect? Well, it's actually extremely straightforward. All you're gonna to want to do is position your light extremely low and aim it towards the ceiling. You will need to narrow the beam using a Fresnel lamp or perhaps a spotlight mount to avoid light spills entering the bathroom altogether, we're only looking to, for the light to hit the ceiling. And by doing this, the bounce light will then illuminate the bathroom with a soft ambient spread inspired by the scenes mentioned above. It may not be majestic, but this simple technique provides sufficient realistic illumination for a typical scene in the bathroom or toilet. As mentioned in the introduction, my bathroom has no windows, so unfortunately I can't rely on the trick of placing your subject near the natural daylight to illuminate the subject and the room. However, that doesn't mean that we cannot simulate the effect because the audience does not have to know how far away the nearest window actually is. Let's look at these examples from films Drive, White God and Bogeyman. These examples all share similar characteristics. There are minimal or no practical lights on set, and instead they use emulated daylight directed into the scene. You'll notice that in these examples, the simulated daylight entering the scene isn't perfect. It doesn't directly hit the subject. Shadows from the windows are present and part of the subject will remain in shadow. However, this is the perfect way to emulate daylight in a darkened environment. Now this type of lighting works well for scenes where your character is either leaving early in the morning or perhaps entering later into the day. And to achieve this effect, you need to use hard light. So again, I would suggest in using the spotlight or Fresnel lamp to keep that light beam narrow. And you're gonna to want to position your light outside of the bathroom and direct the light into the bathroom at an angle as if it was coming through the window somewhere in the house. In my example, I've positioned the subject in front of the mirror and I have the light hit in the mirror. This will additionally add a bounce light into the scene, lifting the shadow somewhat in the background, but also creating pockets of light in the out of focus background, again, reminiscent of the daylight naturally coming through the window. Let's pivot to a slightly more stylized approach by examining the creation of sinister lighting. Now let's look at these examples. We've got Joker, Poltergeist, and Saint Maud. You'll notice that while the characters are observing themselves in the mirrors, the lighting is predominantly top-down. And top-down lighting is often associated with a sinister or eerie atmosphere as it creates unnatural shadows and it dramatically emphasizes facial features. As evidenced by these examples, this type of lighting is frequently used in horror or suspense genres to generate feelings of uneasiness or to depict sinister characters. Now achieving this lighting style requires a bit more equipment than the other two examples. First, you will need a stand with a boom arm. In this instance, I'm using the 120D with a Fresnel lamp to maintain a small light spread. And from here, you need to extend the light above your subject and have them stand directly underneath. Depending on their proximity to the light and where precisely they're positioned, you can further accentuate the shadows on their face. If they step backward, more of their features will be visible. If they step forward, less light will fall onto their face, creating darker, more sinister shadows. In my example, I've also positioned a mini aperture ML9 in the background to add a touch of clarity 
for the character's head. Some locations are that photographic, but following the principles laid out in this video tutorial, I would wager that you may now be in a better position if your project calls for a bathroom or toilet scene. And if it doesn't have one, why not? Because we are in the golden age of bathroom scenes after all. I've been Lewis with Fedivo. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to subscribe and we will see you next week.